Hey guys, so I've been teaching people how to code for a very long time. And I think the number one concern new students, noob nerdlings have when they're approaching software development, whether it be web design or web programming, whether it be C++ or Java or JavaScript or PHP or not Ruby or Python, whatever language, whatever frameworks you want to get into. The number one problem is fear the fear of not getting it right away. So many students there, they're concerned that when they sit down to write code, it just doesn't come right away for a lot of people. And that's a good thing, because if it was so simple and easy, then coding would not be worth very much in the marketplace. I think most of you are learning how to code because you want to get a high paying job. Coders make a lot of money relative to many other professions, well, most other professions. The reason that is, is because initially, at the beginning, there is a challenge. There is a challenge to learning how to code in the first uh, little while. That, that wall, if you will, of understanding or lack of understanding. So this video is to encourage you to not give up, to understand that this will pass if you do, if you do consistent work towards learning to code. Doesn't matter the language. That's another fear that people have is that they fear that a particular language is the one that they're going to learn and it's going to be terrible and nobody's going to want to hire them and they're going to make the wrong choice and then they're going to have to start over. This is an illusion. This is, does not exist in reality for two reasons. Number one, all these languages, they're very similar in many respects. So if you learn JavaScript for you to pivot to Python, to pivot to C Sharp, to pivot to Java, to pivot to PHP, it's pretty easy. That's number one. So pretty easy. What does that mean? So let's say it takes you a couple of months to get your head wrapped around the basics of Python. And then you find that, oh, there's just a lot more jobs in JavaScript with React. How long will it take you to go from knowing Python fairly well, or reasonably well, at least your basics, to moving into JavaScript? Eh, maybe 10% of the time that it took you to learn Python. Why? Because what you'll find is that many of the basic constructs in Python are pretty much the same as they are in JavaScript. Yeah, the code looks different, the syntax looks different, and there'll be particular idiosyncrasies vis-a-vis -vis JavaScript as it relates to Python, meaning Python will handle certain things a little bit different than JavaScript would, especially JavaScript because it's kind of a quirky language. Uh, but again, you'll get over those hurdles pretty quickly. And guess what happens? When you get into the third language that you learn, it gets even quicker. So at this point in time, having written commercial software in eight, nine languages, I've lost track over the years. I can tell you that I can learn a new language from scratch within a few days and be productive because it's kind of like learning to play an instrument. Once you learn how to play a Gibson guitar, you can play pretty much any other guitar brand that you want because guitars are guitars or driving a car. Once you learn how to drive an Audi manual, you can drive a Porsche manual, you can drive a Ferrari manual. It's not a huge difference between the, the cars. Yes, buttons are a little bit different, they look different, but it's pretty much the same. I can tell you with programming languages, it's pretty much the same. So that second fear that you're gonna learn the wrong language is, is, is it's not real, it's an illusion. It's a noobling illusion. So if you see a code YouTuber talk about how you gotta learn this, and oh, if you don't learn this, you're being in a terrible position. They're noobs. It's a clear indicator of noobness. It's like a boxer who goes down with their hands down. You know, go into the ring, okay, this is how you fight. You fight like this with your hands like this. Eh, you know, you got a noob there. So yeah, don't be afraid of learning the, long, the wrong language. It doesn't matter. And in fact, the third reason I wanna talk about is that when you become an experienced developer, you will find in your career that you will be pivoting to different languages. In fact, in a single project, depending on the stack you work on, uh, depending on the environment you work in, uh, in a single project, you may use two languages or even three languages. Yeah, so it's not a big deal. Experienced developers will tell you that um, the language is not an issue. Uh, you just learn the language that's right for the job, 
and away you go. So the biggest fear, again, those are the biggest fears, just the fear of, of when they first start learning to code, they hit some difficulties, because you've got to re, you're literally rewiring your brain to learn to code. You're learning to think in a different way. Now, depending on how you grew up, how your brain is pre-configured, if you will, you may more quickly or less quickly learn to code. But don't worry. It's like climbing a mountain. Once you get to the top, you're at the top, right? So if it takes you three months to learn to code, to learn a language instead of one month, who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody will know as long as you get there. Once you're there, you're there. That's it. You're good. The great thing about the software development world is that there's always different specializations, all these different ways to code. So, for example, you could do down and dirty, algorithm-heavy C++, which is great for game engines, core AI programming, uh, writing very efficient code for small devices that don't have much um, resources in terms of hardware. Or you might find yourself doing a higher level stuff with JavaScript and React. Or you might be doing, um, I don't know, iOS development with uh, Swift where it's drag and drop and it's, it's, it's more visual and user oriented. So there's all these different types of coding that will uh, align itself with different types of people. So you might, may find yourself, again, really good at detailed algorithm coding, if you will, or you may find yourself better on a higher level of architectural level stuff, or you may find yourself better with UI and UX development, which is a very useful and valuable skills. They're all good. I've seen great developers, good friends of mine I know, who are fantastic at architecture, but really bad at UI, UX. Like, the, you wouldn't want to put them on the front end writing um, React or Vue uh, code. They could do it because they're competent coders, but they just have, they don't have a feel for the UI and the user experience, which is just as valid as writing the, the, uh, the bones of some uh, app engine, for example. So there you go. So a lot of flexibility there. Uh, when you hit that coder's wall, when you're first learning, don't worry, it's par for the course. Uh, it, it's good. It's, it's a statement of value. What do I mean by that? When you find that you're uh, hitting things that are difficult, that means you're expanding, you're growing. You know, there's an old Japanese expression, you can't make good steel without a hot flame. And uh, yeah, so when you challenge yourself, you're putting yourself uh, forward. You're, you're raising your game. You're leveling up. If it's too easy, you're not leveling up. So consider it a good thing. If you want to learn to harness your emotions, you want to learn to master your emotions, your emotions are governed, controlled by your lizard brain, your primitive brain, check out the link below. I have a free, it's free, totally free training, a new type of email delivered task based mental training program called lizard wizard komodo it's free and when you sign up you're going to get an email with your first task and every two to three days you get a task little exercises that you can do that will start to train your brain and the more you master your lizard brain the more easily and the more quickly you'll be able to learn new things reduce anxieties, improve your confidence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, yeah, so it's a brand new training style that I'm experimenting with now. So it's 100% free, try it out. And you can unsubscribe anytime you like, of course, no need to spam people. And uh, yeah, so if you have anxieties, you have fears, uh, check it out. The Lizard Wizard Komodo training is live now. It's kind of a little beta for me, and uh, I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with it too. There's some really uh, fun things that you're gonna be doing to uh, help train your mind, which will help you learn how to code much more quickly. All right, thanks for watching, bye-bye.